In this interview, I talked to Sean Markey. He has a great story because he's had some big ups and some big downs, and it's been a long journey. In fact, he and I kind of crossed paths when we first got started working online. So I've heard his name. I knew he was around for a little while, and recently I heard an interview with him, and I thought, this is perfect. I need to get him on the show. So we talk about a specific site that he was able to grow from an expired domain and sell it for multiple six figures. Pretty amazing story. We kind of take the step by step and hear exactly how he did it. He has a domain marketplace called Juice Market. He also writes at Substack, so you could sign up for his newsletter over there. There are links in the description. I think you're going to love this story. And please let me know if you do have questions for Sean. There's a good chance we'll be able to convince him to come back on the show and ask him these follow-up questions. So without further ado, let's get to the interview. Sean, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So for the people that don't know you, can you give a little intro on your, your background and maybe just a little bit on how you got started working in the affiliate marketing world? Sure. Um, I started to kind of get into the online marketing space in maybe 2011, 2012, um, when I was working as a special ed teacher at a high school in Salt Lake. After I left that job, I became a junior SEO um, you know, just did all like the worst things at a marketing agency. They did a lot of uh, building PBNs and I was the guy who just spun the content, put, installed WordPress, you know, linked to the client and moved on to the next one. Uh, and that, that's kind of how I got really involved in uh, kind of what I do now, which is finding domains and building sites on them. Um, I tried to run a, a SEO agency that failed, um, not a good agency owner. And then I worked at Supremacy SEO, which became Smash Digital for a couple years um, before finally going out on my own and just building out um, affiliate websites, which is awesome. a big part of what I do now. Very good. And a lot of people probably heard of Smash Digital just from us talking about it occasionally. So, so you worked there for a little while and this is a pretty big time frame. And, you know, one of the, the headlines that you mentioned on the TMBA podcast was you, you sold a site for a, quote, life changing amount of money. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, but I don't want people to think you magically did that overnight. This was a very long journey and many lessons were learned. So I do want to get to some of the juicy stuff pretty quickly here though. So can you tell us a little bit about that site that you sold a couple years ago that really sort of moved the needle for you? Yep. Um, <clears throat> so it was in the CBD space right when that was just about to reach its peak, I think in kind of mid to late 2019 is when it peaked, you know, when it was possible to compete in that niche, uh, just as a, a guy running a website. Now you need like five figures a month to be competitive at all. Um, and I, I originally picked up an expired domain in 2017 and that's what I built the site on, you know, I just kind of messed around and wasn't too serious about it. Uh, about building on it until about late 2018. Um, I started to get more serious and kind of, you know, post dedicated content. I, I wasn't even targeting like best CBD oil for a while. Um, but when I finally did at the beginning of 2019, uh, it started to, it started to not, not quite take off, but uh, I, I think I earned my first $1,000 month as an affiliate in January of 2019. And then toward the end of February, beginning of March, it started to rank on page one for best CBD oil. And that was, <laughs> that was pretty lucrative. Um, and it just, just really took off from there. So I built it on an expired domain and I also acquired an expired domain that, uh, used to be relevant to the CBD industry. I built a site on that and then I 301 that to my main site. And that's kind of, you know, when it took off. All right. And when did you sell it? I sold it sometime in 2019. So that same year. Okay, great. So from 
January was making like a thousand bucks a month and then it really skyrocketed. You obviously 301 redirected a expired domain that was relevant. Do you happen to remember the metrics for the, the couple domains that you were working with? Um, I think R- the one I, yeah, the one I built the site on was like maybe a DR 15 or 20. And then the site I 301 was maybe like a 20 to 30. Okay. Probably like a hundred referring domains maybe had a lot of industry relevant links, which is what helped. Awesome. All right. And then you started to rank on the first page for probably one of the most profitable terms in that niche. And what did you think, right? You, You had been working on affiliate marketing for a few years, you've had ups and downs, and then you get some traction and you're doing things that I assume that you had tried before and this time it really worked. So just like mentally, what did that do for you? Um, well, it, it's funny, like I, I wasn't really trying to be an affiliate bef- before all this happened. Um, you know, like I said, I, I tried to, to run an agency for a bit. Um, and then I, I think I spent a lot of 2018 acquiring sites kind of in the cannabis CBD niche because I was like, oh, I'll be, I don't know. I thought I'd be like a a cannabis SEO agency again. I was like, okay, I know expired domains. I have experience with PBNs. Like I'll just spin up like this super valuable PBN just in the cannabis space. Like there can't be a lot of those out there uh, and I can charge some good money to put some posts there. Um, But what ended up happening is that one one of those domains that I picked up, you know, like I said, just just kind of took off when I got serious with it. And I, I didn't even build a lot of the links on the sites I acquired. It, it, it was all I mean, it, it wasn't quite accidental, but it was entirely unexpected um, to suddenly, you know, uh, put up a couple reviews of CBD companies and, and started making a couple hundred dollars in late 2018. I was like, oh, this is what people are, you know, this is why people do this. Like, that's awesome. So yeah, when, then I kind of doubled down on it and then it just blew up. Awesome. And can you share any of the revenue numbers? And if you can't, I respect that, but I always try and ask and let you explain. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I can share like, you know, kind of some vague numbers, I guess it made a, in the low thousands, in the first couple months when when it started to take off and then it made like mid five figures a month in affiliate revenue um and then i got a i got a email out of nowhere like hey uh you know we want to buy this site we're trying to do a thing and i was like oh okay sure like you know it it was it was unexpected but um you know, it was a lot of money and and i had a lot of debt over the years like buying courses and and uh, buying domains and student loans. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna take this one off the table and just kind of bet on myself that I could do something like this again. It wasn't like my once in a lifetime shot because I, I, I had built up all the skills you know, over the years to, to make this happen. So I was like, okay, I'll sell this. I can probably do this again. Fantastic. Yeah, that's really cool. And it sounds like maybe it was either a, a company that was looking to buy the site, some sort of a strategic acquisition or a broker or something. So how did you deal with that? Did you hire a lawyer on your side? How did the deal close? Um, Yes, I I did hire a lawyer. Um, I actually wasn't sure if, you know, a a big part of this deal was like deciding whether I wanted to sell or not. Cause you know, like I had this super valuable asset. People were coming to me to buy it. And it's like, you know, at first it's like, do I really want to, do I really want to sell this? Like, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, yeah, it could be life changing money, but like, it could be like a really sustainable income source for a long time. You just don't know. Uh, and I talked to several friends, you know, who, who have been this, through this before, like, like Travis Jameson, a uh, close friend of mine now. Uh, and he was like, I would sell it. And a couple other people said the same thing. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Um, yeah, I, I hired a lawyer, I actually hired um, the, from the team at revisionlegal.com. They have a lot of experience in the space and uh, they just helped me navigate the contract. You know, it was the first time I see in this and there were all kinds of crazy stuff I never thought about before in there. So they, they walked me through it and um, yeah, 
yeah, fantastic. No so you ran an agency for a little while, and I've seen this happen a couple of times where you know, sometimes people just don't like running an agency or it didn't work out for some reason. But along the way, you end up learning skills that allow you to, instead of like building a site that takes a while to earn some money, you can run a service business and earn pretty quickly. Now I'm curious, people can probably learn from your mistakes. What issues did you have running the agency? Any kind of big problems or things that just didn't work with your personality? Yeah, um, I'm not the most organized person ever. Um, that's not a great, that's not you know a, a great thing for someone who's trying to run a bunch of client uh, campaigns to to be going through. Also, this was like fairly early on in my like, you know, quit my job. I can I can I figure it out. You know, like uh, I I I did it the stupid way, which is just like jumping into it with both feet and leaving a paying job and uh being poor for a while so so the, it was some hard lessons but for me it was just about like not quite having the experience like you know if i'm talking to a big brand with a decent budget and i get on the phone with them they could probably tell like oh this guy doesn't really know what he's doing you know i think that came through and and yeah just, just not having a lot of confidence um you know tr trying to trying to price these services for what they're worth. You know, I was, it was just like, Oh, uh, $300 for some work. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's do it. We got nothing else going on. So it was constantly scraping the bottom of the barrel instead of like being really clear about like, this is how we can help. This is our value proposition. This is how much it costs. Like, do you want us to help you out? Um, actually when I helped run the, um, the agency that Travis runs, which is now Smash Digital, like like that was a huge helpful thing. Like like seeing seeing how he ran an agency successfully, seeing how he set things up, you know, learning link building strategies from him. Um, it it was way it was way easier to hop on the phone with someone that knew, you know, Travis was the real deal and they were interested in those links. And so, you know, over the course of a hundred 200 uh, phone calls with with clients for smash I, I got a lot more confident and I could talk about this stuff a lot um, you know for, from a real place of authority and so I think if I started an agency now having gone through that it would be a, a way different experience so definitely um, good to kind of put in the work and, and pay your dues and, and maybe like work with someone who's successful before just being like I'm smart I'll figure it out. <laughs> Because you might not. I didn't. Right. Sure. And do you have any urge to run an agency yourself again, or did, did that uh, cure you of that desire? No, I, I'm stupid, so I'm thinking about doing it again. Um, I, I really would like to do something in the cannabis space specifically, because that's, I mean, that's where all my expertise is, uh, having built out a bunch of sites and, and, you know, now I've made a bunch of contacts. I've actually done some work for people. So it would be a lot easier to say, Hey, here's what we can do. Here's what we've done before. Here's what some smart people you've heard of have to say about our work. And this is the price like to, you know, take it or leave it. But if you leave it, maybe your competitors not, and that'll suck for you. So, you know, a lot more confidence this time around, I, I think I could be a little more successful with it. And you've been inside a you know very successful agency, so you know maybe how to structure the deal so it's profitable and there's enough margin in place. I, I think that mm -hmm. is an issue sometimes with, you know, someone right out of the gate. It's maybe yeah. relatively inexpensive for you to implement something, but the value is super high on the other side, and you're not mm -hmm. you're not closing that gap. So, right, and cool. and just being like, you know, oh, like yeah, we can do this work for $2,000. Like, wow, someone's going to pay us $2,000. That's a lot of money. But like, it's not when you have to buy content, you have to buy links, you have to pay people. Like, if you don't know your numbers, and you don't really know what you're doing, like that, that money goes quickly, and then you're, you're in the red. Yep. So l let's sort of get tactical and go kind of deep in the weeds. So let's say you're getting a new expired domain or if you're an expired or aged domain, something like that. You're planning on building an affiliate site or a site with some display ads and earning from maybe a few different revenue sources. So take us through that. What kind of metrics are you looking for on the domain? And then we'll kind of start leaning into the content 
and keyword research and some of those ideas. But first, the domain. What are you looking for? So the biggest thing I look for when I'm trying to, you know, find a domain that I can build on is, I mean, there, there's a couple of things. So first is, is it indexed? Like, <laughs> that's the first, like, if it's not indexed, um, you're just wasting your money, I think, uh, buying something, hoping to get it back in the index. You don't know if it got, uh, you know, a penalized in a past life. You don't know if there's a reason it's not indexed. So, um, like, like once you found a domain you kind of like, that's the first thing that that I think you should look for. But I, I guess I should back up and say, like, before I start doing that, you, you want to find a domain that has a lot of authority already. You want to have a, a, a domain that has a bunch of referring domains, you know? And the way that I find those, uh, usually they're at GoDaddy auctions because they just have the, the largest inventory. Um, there's uh, there's a couple tools you can use. One is Domcop. That's D O M C O P, uh, cop dot com, and that um, yeah. Then there's another one called Spamzilla dot io, and both of those take like the entire list of domains that are expiring, and they run it through a couple APIs. So they run it through like Moz, Majestic you know, similar web, Alexa, and that allows you to take like the thousands and thousands of names that are expiring and kind of whittle it down to a, a more narrow focus. So you can actually, you know, sort through them and find one that works for you. Um, there, there's nothing really like, you know, oh, it has to be at least DR10 and it has to have 50 referring domains, nothing like that for me. Um, I'm just looking for, for, for me personally, I'm looking for a domain that has uh, a lot of relevancy in the niche that I'm working in. You know, so if you're, if you're doing something in like the supplement space or the health space, like don't be looking for domains that have authority, like in automotive or, you know, in home and garden, because you, you really want to align the the topical relevancy of the domain that's expiring with the niche that you're working in. Does that make Perfect. sense? Yep, definitely. So okay. relevancy is one of the most important things and you probably can sacrifice some of the, you know, power of the links perhaps if it's hyper relevant. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Um, the, the, the other thing, sorry, I just want to include in addition to uh, having a site be, in the index, if you do the you know site colon domain name search, um, you also want it to be ranking for some keywords, any keywords. Like it's just a really good sign if it's ranking for some keywords, um, and and so that's something I personally look for. Just out of curiosity, what's the most you've paid for an auction domain or expired or otherwise? I actually bought one this year for just under thirty k. Um, it was Damn. a big. It was a big old domain, yeah. Prior to that, probably about seven thousand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's some uh, that's some scratch. Pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't start there. I wouldn't have paid that much if I didn't like really know what I was doing and have sold a couple sites to have some money in the bank. Right on. Yeah. Could you imagine, like back when we were getting started, to drop under thirty k, our wives would have kicked us out, man. That's nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I mean, that's hell. That's, that's more, uh, more than I've ever had on a credit card, like a line of credit. So it would have been like straight up impossible for me to do <laughs> until recently. Sure. Sure. Okay. So you find the domain, it's in your niche, things look good. You get it. So what's your keyword approach? I wish I had something smarter to say, but I don't. Um, like, I think before you find a name, like before you put down money on a name, you should know how you're going to monetize it. And then how you're going to monetize that, I think, kind of informs your keyword research. You know, um, if, you, if you're doing something with supplements and you know that like best X supplement, you know, best whatever for pain or best whatever for joints, um, if you know that you have some way to monetize those keywords, like that, that's how I would approach it. Now that, you know, it's not the be all end all of, of 
keyword research. Um, you don't want to just only go after the, the affiliate keywords. <laughs> that doesn't end well, I can tell you from the last December update. But w when you're doing your keyword research, you really should tie the, the keywords you want to rank for with how you're going to monetize those. And so like, like that's, that's very broad, but that's how I think about it, you know? And to break it down a little more, I know um, I've had people ask me, hey, I'm not making much on affiliate revenue, for example. And you check out their content, you look at their site, and it's like 90% informational content, no buyer's intent at all, and it's just the wrong kind of traffic. So that's kind mm -hmm. of what you're saying, right? I mean, basically, um, just, just if you... I guess if you're going to monetize something, say through Amazon, like the, you know, the, the, it kind mm -hmm. of opens up the whole world. Like you can rank for any product name, any keyword, as long as it's on Amazon. Um, if you are, like I said, in the supplement space and you're going after a specific kind of supplement or, you know, you have a, you have an affiliate relationship in that way, like, like, yeah, then, then your keyword research is going to be a, around selling that product. Um, you, you definitely shouldn't just have like, you know, 95% info content and be like, oh, maybe they'll click like the link in my sidebar. Like you really definitely need to consider buyer's intent. Yes. Um, after the, the algorithm update last December, you don't want to have that in the other direction either, where it's 90% affiliate by this kind of keywords and 10% info content. So, so yeah, like striking a better striking a better uh, balance between those is also important. I, I guess it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never really thought about like, oh, what's my keyword research strategy? Um, so uh, uh, there's a lot of nuance there, but but for sure. me, it's all about tying, tying what, what do you want to rank for with the product? You know, like if you're ranking for best CBD oil or, or you're trying to rank for that, like you're going to, I mean, that that's very straightforward. You have relationships with all these CBD affiliates. You want to write this content that promotes them you know, that the keyword research takes care of itself. And then you start breaking down and be like, oh, maybe for pain, CBD for dogs, you know, start kind of getting into sub sub keywords. Got it. Okay. And I'm going to try to, I'll just give you like a A or a B. So do you go more for like high volume and higher competition keywords or lower competition and low search volume keywords? Um, me personally, uh, I go for the higher stuff just because like, if you don't get it, you'll get some version of it. You know, you'll get some long tail from it. That's not, that's definitely not the only way one should do it. You know, I, I can see going the other way and being like, okay, we're going to own this keyword and then we'll own this keyword and kind of build up. Um, and, and it takes less, but I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it takes a lot, it takes a lot of effort to rank for a keyword worth ranking for why not go for the top one, you know? And then if you, if you fail to reach that, you're still getting something, hopefully. Okay, that makes sense. Moving on to the actual content, did you write it yourself? Are you outsourcing it? How do you handle that piece of the puzzle? I, I've, done, I've done it all the ways you can think of um, with varying levels of success. The thing that's worked for me, I, I don't write it myself because I'm, I'm busy, I'm stupid, and I try and do like 50 different things, and so I don't have enough time to do, you know, all the little pieces of that. The thing that's worked best for me is is finding a writer that like gets you and gets your content and can you know follow a really good um, like an SOP. So you can say, you know, here, here's how I like to write content. Here's, you know here's the keyword I want. This is how to find the sub keywords, you know, look, look at people also ask and look at other autofill keywords that Google will give you and then run it through, you know, this tool like um, surfer or whatever I use. I use clear scope personally. I like that a lot, but um, I mean, all the tools like phrase or market muse, like they all kind of do the same thing in a different way. Um, so that's what's worked for me. Just, just being able to bring somebody on the team. And uh, obviously you have to have a little bit of success first because it can get expensive to have like a dedicated part-time writer 
or, or a dedicated full-time writer, but that's what works for me. Okay. And wh where do you hire your writers from? Um, I've, I've experimented here or there. Um, I, I actually found one or two really good writers from Dynamite Jobs, from the people that you know do Tropic MBA, the, the DC. Um, I don't know if they offer the same kind of thing anymore. They might have changed changed up their offering. I've also had success from Craigslist, which is funny, but like people really aggregate, um, the, or, or, or they, they have tools that aggregate all the feeds from all the different cities. So if you post something like in Boulder, like people from Seattle will see it, and people from New York. Um, and for me personally, just, just finding a way to, um, you know, flip through a lot of applications easily, like having them fill out a survey instead of just email your inbox directly has worked well for me. And I find uh, several really good writers that way. Okay, great. And I take it you probably have kind of a outline or template that you can give them and they can sort of follow it. You mentioned SOPs, standard operating procedures. So I take it you try to put a system around it so you don't have to hold their hand too much, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, you, you do a little bit of the work up front and it pays off over time. Got it. Okay. Any like conversion tips on the content? Do you use tables, stuff like that? Yes, I have in the past. Like, like I really think the December update changed a lot of things. So uh, my experience before that versus now uh, is a little different. But in the past, yeah, like, like, tr you know, I, I would try, try a little bit like, oh, we'll, you know, put a link at the end of the post and we'll put a link in the beginning and, you know, like the big featured box right under the H2s or something and, and just kind of seeing what works. But, um, I, I think, I don't know, I think you have to be a little smarter about that now. You can't just plaster a page with like Amazon affiliate links because Google says, Hey, this, this is just a middleman. Like they're offering no value which is true in most cases. Um, I'm, I'm not good at that at all. I just, just sort of wing it. And uh, you know, if, if conversions are going through great, like I have other stuff on my plate, that's not the best way to do things. That's just how I ended up doing them. And, and actually like <clears throat> from my experience, ranking for a keyword that has incredible volume and is super high uh, buyer intent like like when I had the CBD site, no one reads the content. No one compares anything. Like they click on it, they click on your post, it's ranking first. They scroll down to the first recommendation and they click that and they click buy. And that was like some super high number, like 50, 60% of all the sales uh, that we made on that page went to the first. I mean, and you know, you, you could record the screen and watch people and they just sort of scroll for a second and they just click. So you know, it, it, it depends on what you're ranking for. If it's something like that, where it's super high volume, really high buyer intent, like it doesn't matter. Just give them a link, just give them a link early. Don't make them, don't make them work hard for it, you know? But if, yeah. if you're, if you're on something that has less buyer intent maybe, and you have to really educate people, then, then it matters a little bit more. Sure. And don't be too hard on yourself. I'm kind of the same way. It's like, if we can get close enough for most mm -hmm. things, most of the time, yeah, if the person is trying to buy that product, you don't have to hit them over the head with like 50 million links on one page. Just give them a couple clear calls to action and make it easy for them mm -hmm. to click it. So. And and really like that brings up another point I, I've thought about. Um, know, know what you're good at and know what you're passionate about. Like from, from doing all this work, I've come to see that like, I, I do not like scaling a site. I do not like making these little tiny, you know, tweaks that increase things by 5% or 4% or whatever. Like, ugh, that's boring. Like I want to, I want to create the site from nothing and then I want to make it successful and then I want to sell it. I don't want to ever think about that stuff. And you know, that's not everyone's cup of tea. Like maybe some people are like not stoked about that work, but can't wait to like start changing button colors and font sizes or something that that's just not me. So I think there's a lot of value in knowing what you're passionate about when it comes to building, when it comes to the life cycle of building and selling a site. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. Okay. 
you mentioned the December update and I'm going to sort of reorder what I was going to do. I was going to ask you about link building next, but let's talk about the December update. So this is December of 2020. There was an algorithm update and what, what happened? Tell us about it. So I, I, I woke up on the morning of, I think it was the third. Um, and like, you know, if you have an affiliate site that's getting traffic, like one of the first things you do in the morning probably is check your analytics, see how things are looking. And traffic was down like 30% that morning. And I was like, ooh, that's that's not great. Um, so I guess there's an algorithm update. You know, I got up, got to my computer, started seeing other people talking about that. Um, so over the course of the third and the fourth, as this was rolling out and, and Google announced it, I think I think Google announced it like the day before. So maybe I was aware of that. Um, it was just like, okay, I'm down 30 to 40% on my main site that brought in most of my money. Like, that's not great, but you know, that's what happens. Like, that's what you sign up for. If you're, if you're trying to go after SEO, um, you know, we'll, we'll regroup and we'll figure out what it was targeting and we'll build back up. And then like a week later, I think. No, not a week. It was like the seventh or the ninth, I guess. Um, traffic went down another like eighty or ninety percent from so for, for for this specific site, I was doing about twenty five hundred visits a day, um, and I was left with like maybe two hundred, three hundred mm. visits a day. It was not great, and like you can maybe come back from thirty or forty percent, but like ninety percent is a that, that's a big number to overcome. You know, I, I had a team of several people and, you know, I was pouring all the money back into growing these sites, buying another site, growing that, you know, trying to build a portfolio, which is fine when things are good, but like in the lean times, it's like, oh damn, like I'm way overexposed. You know, I got to make payroll for the next, and I, you know, I can cover this month and the next month, but there's no money coming in anymore. It, it wasn't a great feeling. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I had maybe like three or four sites and like three out of four got hit in some capacity, but the main site got hit by like 90%. So it was, it was done. So how did you regroup? Cause we're a few months past it now. So what's going on with these sites now and how are you trying to recover them or not recover them? I, I ended up actually selling most of the sites because, I mean, you know, like I said, you're, you're signing up for these risks when you when you get into this industry. But like having having that that much of your value like wiped out overnight, you know, I've heard about it from other people, but it was always like, oh, that'll never happen to me. Like I'm I'm smarter and better or whatever. But like, nope, uh, that's not the case. So. I, I don't know, like, I was just, I was just like, I, I don't want to be this exposed in this way again. Like, I've, I've done this for two or three years, I've had crazy success, like, I, you know, I can, I've got the receipts, you know, I've, I've built up this authority. Um, there's got to be something else I can focus on that's a little more robust, and not so easily toppled. Um, so I, I sold one site through Motion Invest with John and Spencer. Um, that went really well. Th that site actually didn't get affected at all because in my opinion, it had a lot of non-affiliate content, which is something that that algorithm update was going after in my opinion. So so that site I sold for a great multiple because it was it was very uh, sticky. You know, it ranked, it, it had a good age. It ranked for a long time. It wasn't built on an expired domain. It was built on a hand reg domain in like 2014. Um, at a smaller site that I had built from an expired domain, I picked up that July that I sold for lower five figures. And then I had a site that I picked up in May of 2020 that I sold for six figures. Um, it's got hit a little bit. I, I could maybe have rebuilt and got, you know, picked it back up. But like I said, I was just like, well, I'm done, done with this. Um, so I, I sold that for about half of what I would have gotten like, you know, two weeks prior, which was, it was hard. Like that, that sucked. 
Um, but I was still happy to, you know, cash out some value. I thought, you know, I can take this money and start something, like I said, a little bit more, um, a, a little bit safer, you know, long-term. That's, that's not, that's not reliant on one single thing. Sure. Um, and then the, the site that got hit by 90%, um, which is built on an amazing domain name. So I was super, super sad about to, to kind of lose that. Um, I heard, I think on an interview on niche pursuits that this guy just 301 all the content off to another domain. And I was like, well, what have I got to lose? Um, so I tried that and it, it worked. All the content popped right back up. It was crazy. Um, so I, I'm still making a little bit of money from that site. Uh, um, I decided to not transfer the Amazon, uh, the Amazon affiliate account because they uh, they're just a terrible partner i'm kind of uh kind of down on amazon after last april when they cut commissions um so i was like i don't care if i lose money you know i just sold all these sites i'm not putting amazon on my site anymore that's just me um it's definitely costing me money but you know i'm 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 fine with that at this point what ratio of informational to affiliate content are you aiming for nowadays after this December update? So the way I approach it is purely from experience and not like deep research or something. So, you know, take this with, but in my experience with all of these sites, like, yes, there's been, let's say there were 30 to 50 pages that were monetized with Amazon and they all brought in a little bit of money, but there were clearly like three or four pages that were the superstars. They brought in like 75%. And I, I would bet it's like that on a lot of different sites. You know, you have a couple pages that bring in a huge chunk of it. And you, you know, then you have a, a bunch of other pages that bring in tiny percentages. And, and my, my plan is like just monetize those three or four pages that are the superstars. You know, they convert well. Maybe you have um, a private affiliate deal that is that has a really high percentage. You know, above like three percent or whatever Amazon gives. Like, focus on those. Like, like make that your your uh, buying intent page, and then just build up a lot of other content that's not buying intent. And then if you see that a page is ranking really well for a keyword, maybe you didn't intend to uh, have some buying intent, but you know it's in the top three. Like. Now you can kind of change the intent of that page, make it into a best of kind of list or a buying page or, you know, send traffic to another page you've made for that. And, and I think just being a little more thoughtful about which pages you're monetizing, which pages are buyer intent, that's the way to go now. That way you're not like, oh, I have to hit this 50-50 ratio. Like it, that's arbitrary, you know? who's to say what works or who's to say what the ratio will be after the next update. I think it's safer just to be like, these are the pages that, you know, put food on the table. This is what I'm going to monetize and then slowly bring in other pages as it makes sense to. Got it. Very nice. So just from a broader, higher level standpoint, are there any strategies or ideas that people need to keep in mind if they're looking at expired or age domains to build a site on? I think the, the biggest strategy is, like I said, make sure it's indexed, make sure it's ranking for something. And then the most important metric after those is topical relevancy. Um, you know, you can buy a, a the, the site I bought last year had a DR of like 15 or 20, I think, but it had like a hundred referring domains from, from real authorities in the niche. It was beautiful, beautiful backlink profile. That's why it cost me a lot of money to win that auction. Um, but that's really the most important thing. Like, like, yeah, like, you know, backlinks from Vice and New York Times and uh, HuffPo, like that, that's great. That's a great sign for authority. But like, if you're building a site in the, you know, medical niche and you have a, you have backlinks from Healthline and you have backlinks from like Med, Med News Plus or whatever, whatever medical sites, Med News Today, like that's way more valuable than any other metric you can look at because that's what's going to help your site rank when you start pumping out some new content. So we're winding towards the end here so I don't take all of your Friday afternoon. 
What's your goal overall? So you had the, a big exit, you sold some sites, you unloaded and freed some mind space, thank goodness. And you're building a couple other sites. You have some other projects, which we'll talk about in a few minutes here. But yeah, what's your overall goal? What what game are you playing? So right now, I I kind of, I'm not putting too much attention on the affiliate sites that I have just because, you know, like in the way I think about it, like the way I've approached those sites, there was no moat. Like it doesn't matter to Google whether they serve up my site or serve up someone else's site. If we're all just saying these are the best headphones, you know, like it's not really defensible. So, um, and, and there are, I think, ways to make that defensible, if, you know, if you're building out a portfolio of sites, but the way I was doing it, it was not. So um, I feel like I've gotten a lot from building affiliate sites myself. And um, now I'm trying to do something else. One of the sites I'm building out is like a, like a B2B play in the cannabis space, which I don't think there's a lot of, you know, it's not very, it's not very competitive in the way that like, CBD oil or something is. So uh, aside from, you know, talking about expired domains um, and a couple of the things we'll talk about in a minute, the main thing I'm focused on is building out like a, like a cannabis job board directory kind of site. Great. And I think, I mean, it's just going to be a bigger industry as it's legalized in different places. I'm in the great state of Colorado, so it's mm-hmm. freely freely available. Mm-hmm. And a lot of other states are in the same boat. So I imagine like every state is going to eventually come around in maybe you know, 50 years for some of the states in the south <laughs> where I'm from. But yeah, I think that's a great idea. Awesome. Well, Let's talk about some of the new projects you got going on. I think some really good fits for my audience. I think people are going to be really interested. So tell us about uh, one of these new endeavors you got going on. Sure. Um, so one of the things I created uh, in partnership with Travis, Travis Jamison, who I mentioned earlier, um, it's a domain name marketplace called Juice Market. It's at juicemarket.com. And it's just a place where you can go to buy or sell a domain that has a history that, you know, that has referring domains that has some good topical relevancy. Um, there's, there's competitors, I guess, competitors out there like Otis, O-D-Y-S dot global. Um, they're, they're a place where you can go and buy a domain, um, that has the same kind of history, but their thing is they buy the domains and then they sell them to you. And what we built was like like a true marketplace. Like if you have two or three domains you picked up or, you know, you started to build an affiliate a, a site on, but really didn't, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. But, you know, there's some links there. Like there's some, there's some value. Like you can go to this marketplace and list it for sale and sell it to someone that understands that value and is looking for, you know, those kind of names. Um, so so that's, that's the first thing we built. Um, and then since about 2019, I write a, uh, a weekly newsletter on expired domains where I look at the auction coming up for the next week and I list out like the five or six best names going to auction, like, you know, with the best backlink profile, um, with the most authority. And I talk about how I would use those names if I were going to build something, whether that's to 301 to another site or whether that's to, you know, build a brand on. Um, and yeah, I just kind of get deep on each one. And then I also give some tips on, you know, how I found success building expired domains and, you know, some, maybe some case studies here or there. And that is, that's a Substack newsletter. It's at sem.substack.com. Very cool. And I, I don't know if you share how many people subscribe, but I'm curious if if you're able to share because I know some of my friends are doing Substack and I haven't dabbled in there. I have my a newsletter elsewhere and have mm-hmm. infrastructure elsewhere. But yeah, how's Substack going for you? It, it's good. I mean, it makes things dead simple to monetize. Like I don't want to ever think about <laughs> the code involved to you know make that happen. But you just put in your Stripe info and it works. Um, I've got about, I guess about 60 paying 
subscribers, which is cool. Like it's such a niche list. Like I never expect to have a ton, you know, um, yeah. but it's, it's, it's doing pretty well. Like, I, I, I mean, at this point in time, you know, it goes up and down. I, I'm doing about a thousand a month in subscriptions, which, which really like I, I use a lot of that money to buy expired domains and do some experiments that I can talk about in, in the future. So, um, yeah, it's just like a cool little side gig. And, and yeah. I really like, I really enjoy writing the, these emails. So it's like a right. fun. Ooh, yeah. And I think uh, the beauty of it is it sounds like what you were doing anyway, checking out new auctions and now mm -hmm. you're just documenting it. You get a little money to play around with. It's enough to get yep. you to show up. And I mean, you were, you were doing it anyway. So very cool. Yep. Yeah, exactly. All right. So we'll put links and everything so people could find that stuff. Anywhere else that uh, folks could find you, Sean? I'm pretty active on Twitter. So just at Sean Markey on Twitter. Um, if you want to see me complain about stuff or talk <laughs> about the occasional domain name, that's that's the place to go. Right on. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me.